We're going to use what you know about trigonometry to solve right triangle problems, problems involving the parts of right triangle. So let's use those trigonometric ratios, specifically sine, cosine, and tangent, to find measurements. And as you already know, in a right triangle, which is formed with the same angle measurement, the ratios of the opposite to hypotenuse, the opposite to adjacent, and the adjacent to hypotenuse are always the same no matter how big or small the triangle gets. And for any given right triangle with, let's say, an angle A, we remember that the opposite side is the side that is not touching the vertex. The vertex for angle A is at, at point A. The opposite side is not touching the vertex. The hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. Then the adjacent side is the other side, and both the hypotenuse and the adjacent side always touch the vertex. We're going to define the ratios as follows. The sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So many teachers, including myself, teach the chant SOKOTOA to help remember the ratios in these three trigonometric functions. I'm not a big fan of mnemonics, but in some cases they can be helpful. And SOKOTOA stands for the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Ka. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. TOA. When you're doing these type of problems, one of the first things you want to do is label your triangle. Label the angle. You want to label the opposite side and the adjacent and the hypotenuse. That way, figuring out the ratios becomes a lot easier. If you don't label them, it will be more confusing. You'll be more prone to making mistakes. If we look at angle S, the sine of angle S is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite of 6 units long, the hypotenuse is 10. So this sine ratio is going to be 6 over 10 simplified down to 3 over 5. The cosine is the adjacent of the hypotenuse, ka. The adjacent side is 8 because it's touching the vertex. And the hypotenuse, of course, also touching the vertex is 10. So the cosine ratio is 8 over 10. And finally, the tangent is the opposite of the adjacent. Opposite is 6, adjacent is 8. The tangent ratio of angle S is 6 over 8. It's important to note that these ratios change depending on what angle you're looking at. So for angle W, if we wanted to find the sine, cosine, and tangent, for angle W, this is the opposite side, the 18. 24 is the adjacent side. And 30 is the hypotenuse. Therefore, the sine of W is 18 over 30. The cosine of W is 24 over 30. And the tangent of W is 18 over 24, all of which simplify. However, this changes if we're looking at angle U. For angle U, the opposite and the adjacent are switched. The opposite side is 24. This is why labeling really is very helpful. Because sometimes we're looking at triangles that have been skewed, transformed in ways that we're looking at different angles. OK, so for angle U, the adjacent side is, is the 18, and the hypotenuse is still 30, because they meet at point U, the vertex. The opposite side now becomes 24. So the sine of angle U is opposite over hypotenuse, 24 over 30. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 18 over 30. And the tangent is 24 over 18. So it matters a lot which angle you're looking at. When solving applied problems involving trigonometry, it's very helpful to look at the problem and figure out the sides that you know and the sides that you're trying to figure out. That's going to be a clue as to what ratio to use. So here is a dog run, which uh, used a lot in the city to keep dogs kind of on a line and give them some freedom of movement. So you want to know how long this dog line needs to be. And you know this is 11 feet. And for whatever reason, you don't know this measurement. And you know that this is going to form the dog line. The dog run is going to make an angle of 35 degrees with this part of the house. Well, that is enough information, and that's why trigonometry is useful for this kind of problem, because it helps you solve problems without a lot of information. So for the 35 degree angle, 11 is the opposite side. The x we're trying to find out is the hypotenuse, because it's opposite this right angle. We look for whichever ratio is an opposite over hypotenuse, that's sine. So the sine of 35 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite, 11 over the hypotenuse x. 
and now it's just a matter of solving for x using algebra. Remembering that the sine of 35 degrees is a number like any other number, it, so this is going to work very nicely for an algebraic standpoint. We're going to multiply both sides by x, and so you're going to get x sine 35 degrees equals 11. Then you're going to divide by the sine of 35 degrees on both sides, and your answer is going to be x equals 11 over the sine of 35 degrees. And that's going to equal approximately 19.2 feet. A uh, couple of terms that do pop up sometimes when you're dealing with trigonometric applications, and that is an angle of depression and an angle of elevation. And an angle of depression is if you're kind of up top and you're looking down at something, the angle that's formed between a horizontal from your eyes down to the object, this angle is called an angle of depression. A person or object from below that's looking up, it's called an angle of elevation. From the horizontal of your eyes or the object up to the new object, the target. So let's look at another application to finish this off. If we have a dog looking up in a tree towards a squirrel, that's an angle of elevation because the dog's looking up at the squirrel. The dog forms a 64 degree angle looking up at the squirrel. We know the distance of animals is 55 feet. How high is the squirrel and how far is the dog from the base of the tree? We can find out both these parts even with just one leg and an angle. And by the way, back from geometry, that's because we know the 90 degree angle also, so this is an angle, angle, side kind of situation. So solve for the height of the tree and the distance the dog is from the tree. Well, let's label the triangle first. If that's the 64 degree angle, then this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. And of course, the 55 is the hypotenuse. Well, if we want to find the x, the, the height of the tree, the Opposite over the hypotenuse is what we're going to use. That's the sine. The sine of 64 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. It's equal to x over 55. So to solve this for x, we're going to multiply both sides by 55. So we get 55 times the sine of 64 degrees is equal to x. x is 55 times the sine of 64 degrees. That's going to be, mean that the height of the tree is 49.4 feet approximately. We use a different ratio to find the distance the dog is from the tree, and that's going to be cosine because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, similar kind of setup for finding how far the dog is from the tree. Cosine because we're going to try to find the adjacent side by using the adjacent of the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 64 degree is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or y over 55. So if we multiply both sides by 55, we're going to get 55 times the cosine of 64 degrees equals y. So that distance the dog is from the tree is approximately 24 feet. So that's a recap of the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios and how to use them to solve applied right triangle problems.